welcome to the Puppet Zone. My name's Greg and today we're going to be looking at using audio to advance your puppetry. Uh, there's several different ways that you can take your puppetry to the next level and one of those is using audio in your puppet performances. Today we're going to look at using music for background tracks, intros and exits, transitions. We're going to talk a little bit about using sound effects and also pre-recorded puppet tracks. So let's get started. Nice kitty! Nice kitty! Alright, one of the ways that you can use audio to make your puppet performance a little sharper is to use introductions and exits. Something like this might kick off your show and something like this might notify the audience that your show is done. Uh, you can also use sound to transition from one scene to the other or one puppet to the other. Something like this. It's just a short transition track that lets people know what's going on. Intros let people know your show is beginning. An exit may wind down your audience and let them know that the show is coming to a close and transitions will let you move from one scene to the next. Another way to use music is a background track in your performance. Um, you can use music just as a background for your speaking. Um, I think that's probably the hardest one to do because you've got to make sure that the level is low enough that people can easily hear you. There's nothing more annoying than not being able to understand the speaker because their music is too loud. I know I've struggled with that myself in videos and puppets and so I don't use those a whole lot and if I do I make sure that the sound is really really low. Keep that volume low enough that you can easily hear your speaker um, because young children and older people's ears have difficulty filtering out uh, that background music so keep it low if you use it. But background music is also great when you want to set the scene. Uh, for example if your puppet is going to be out in the forest and all you've got is a stick it's hard for people to figure out where it is but if you have something say like this people will kind of get the idea that they're out in the forest you got animal noises and bugs and wind and all those kind of things if you've got a day at the beach you may have a pail and a shovel but if you throw in this People will have no trouble realizing that your puppet is having a day at the beach. And so use background sounds to set the scenes for your puppet shows. Sound effects can be used as well to fill in for puppets that you don't have. Let's say example, uh, like the first thing that we saw, um, I didn't have a tiger puppet, so I used that sound effect. You knew that there was a tiger chasing the puppet. Um, you can use sound effects for props. Let's say you need a chainsaw, but you don't have a chainsaw. If you got a chainsaw sound, then you can mime your puppet cutting down a tree with a chainsaw. They'll understand what's going on. And so sound effects are effective uses for props and sometimes for other puppets. Um, and they're also just fun. You can use your cartoon sound effects for uh, falls and boings on the head and all those kind of fun things that you've seen in cartoons growing up. Uh, so sound effects are fun. Don't go overboard with them. Like anything, if you use them too much, they kind of lose their effectiveness. Uh, but have a little fun with sound effects. Another way to use audio is with pre-recorded puppet tracks. Um, there's nothing more difficult than being a beginning puppeteer and having to focus on your script while you're performing and your puppet at the same time. Uh, a lot of times we focus on our script and we forget about our puppet. I don't know how many times I've seen uh, beginning puppeteers, they're so focused on their script and getting the words right and their vocals right that they forget that their puppet's mouth is supposed to be moving or they're not looking or doing the actions that they need to make a, a believable puppet. 
Uh, so pre-recorded scripts uh, let you focus on your puppetry. You can find scripts that really contain the background music and the sound effects and the puppet vocals, the pu puppet tracks all together. All you've got to do is practice that and get your lip sync down um, and then everything runs and all you have to do is focus on your puppetry. Uh, the most difficult part of that is lip syncing to somebody else's vocal tract. But with practice, you learn it. It's just like uh, lip syncing to a song. And so those are a great way to do that. Um, you can find some of those out there on uh, puppet websites. Uh, there's not a whole lot. A lot of them are uh, Christian or faith-based uh, puppet scripts. And so what you may have to do is record your own. And all you've got to do is get your script together and get something that, that can record audio. It could be your phone, or you could get some microphones uh, and get those set up. And the beauty is, if you have a little bit of experience editing audio, um, you can take out your blunders and you can layer in your sound effects and your background music. You can invite some friends and you can record multiple puppets onto your script. And if you're a one-man show, that means that now you can do at least two different puppets at the same time, or you can have multiple puppets with different voices that come up one at a time, and it's all you do and everything. It's all on that audio track, and all you have to do is practice and change your puppets. And so pre-recorded puppet tracks are a good option as you begin uh, puppetry, or if you want to do multiple puppets, uh, especially if you're doing it all by yourself. All right, so where do we get audio that we can use? Uh, there's two things that we need to think about when we're using audio. Is it copyrighted? That means, can I legally use it or does somebody own the rights to this and I can't legally use this without their permission? And is it royalty free? Uh, basically, royalties mean that if you're using it, somebody is getting payments for it. You're paying in for using that. And you may be using a service that you pay for that pays the royalties. Um, but what my suggestion is, is, is using music that you have the copyright permission to use that's royalty free. That way you're not paying anything in. Um, there's multiple websites available online that you can find uh, music that you legally have permission to use and are royalty free. Um, one of the ones that I use is soundblocks.com. I can find background music and music um, and sound effects along with other things. I'm not sponsored by them, but it's a site that I've been using for years um, and have been very successful and very happy with it. Uh, but again, there are several of those out there that you can find uh, music that you're legally able to use for videos or your live uh, performances. Um, if you're buying music, um, make sure that it says on there that uh, you have permission to use it for performances and that it is royalty free and you'll be set. The last thing I want to talk about is how, how do we do this? How do we get the music out there? Um, now I've already done a video on using sound systems and so I'm not going to go over uh, that part of it um, but there's a couple of things that I want to show you as far as how do you control the music while you're doing your show. Um, if you want to go old school and you're using CDs um, you may have heard of those, those little round silver things. Um, well, you can find the CD players still around. I got this one not long, long ago when I bought a sound system. Um, it actually has a foot control and it has a wired remote. And so I can start and stop and skip the tracks on my CD. So if you're doing something with CDs, you can find something like that. I'm not sure that they sell these anymore, but you might can find it on eBay or somewhere used. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can find remotes that work with your music players. Um, this is my old original iPod and I found a remote that will plug in and work with that. It just has an attachment that slides in and I have a remote that controls it. And I know that there are remotes out there for all kinds of music players. Um, Another thing you can look at, um, a lot of magicians use remotes that run their sound systems and so if you really want to be fancy you can find something that uh, performers use and this is something you can slip in your pocket and so it's got a lot of different uh, things. Now this one actually works with a specific app and so it controls and, and does a variety of things but you can again find remotes that are going to work with the sound systems that you have and the different players. But what I just found not too long ago 
um, and have switched to um, is basically a Bluetooth electronic page turner. This is actually the AirTurn BT500 S2. Um, and what it is is a small unit that Bluetooths to my iPad and I can put the music that I'm using for my performances on my iPad and with these two buttons which I can program to some degree I can start and stop or skip songs or go to the next song and so if I'm doing a show by myself which usually I am I can have my music play a song and then stop and when I get ready for the next song I can hit that button and start that song up. A lot of times I'm going to do something and then I want the music to stop or change while I talk and then I'm ready for the next uh, thing to play and I just hit that button. And so these are pretty handy. Uh, there's a variety of these available. I picked this one off, off of Amazon. They're a little pricey but this thing is solid. It's hard plastic. Um, now I've not put a whole lot of use into it yet but I know some professionals that use them um, and swear by them. And so I'm excited to, to get into using this a little bit more um, but look for a, a page turner uh, they're really made to change the the pages on i iPads and those kind of things for like uh, you know sheet music for piano players or musicians or changing the pages on books and those kind of things but they work great for music players well that's all I've got for today I hope that it was helpful and that you are out there using your puppets and that you will look at using some audio in your next puppet show